Let's talk about adding content to your app. So your app works kind of like a website where you add a page and then that page goes in the menu and that is what shows up for your visitors to be able to click on. For example, if I wanted to add a location page, I would create the location page, add it to my menu, and then it would show up in the app like this. So I'm going to show you the uh, few different ways to add content to your uh, app. And this includes adding WordPress content, adding static HTML content, media, things like that. So the first thing you're going to look at is the custom pages item in your app customizer. When you click on that, you might see some existing pages and or you can add a new page. So you can edit an existing page by clicking on it and it should bring up whatever type of page it is will bring up a different edit screen and or you can add a new one and I'm going to show you the new ones here. This is where you're going to add your content to your app and you have a few different choices. So I'm going to go over these one by one. First you'll see custom layout and this is where you can add custom HTML. You can also add WordPress content, offline content. You can mix and match and move stuff around. It's going to be our most flexible option. Um, it is the most advanced option as well. So I'll show you how to use that in just a minute. The other one will be WordPress posts, which will just be a list of posts. You can change the way it looks, play those in your app and also use categories and things like that. The media is if you have audio, video, things like that that you want to display. And then BuddyPress is for all the BuddyPress pages. AppCommerce, that's for your WooCommerce pages like shop, cart, and account. And then you have a WordPress iframe page, which is going to be when you have like custom plugin functionality that does not work through the API. For example, a like a directory plugin or a, a submit like a contact form or um, stuff like that. If you just want to display WordPress posts, the easiest way to get started is by clicking on the WordPress posts here. Give your page a title. Choose the way you want it to display. The default list is more compact. The cards is going to be a little bit more expanded, but it's a nice layout. And then you can choose the route that you want. So if you we have it pre-filled to just display posts from your site, from UWP API, you can display custom post types, but it does require some extra setup because those are not registered in the API by default. So check out our documentation for help on that. And then you can also add custom parameters. For example, if you wanted to add a certain number of pages, certain if you only want to display five posts, you put per page equals five. You can also add categories by adding the category term ID. If you need help finding that, click on the little help icons and this will pop up and show you information about custom post types and also how to customize your routes by giving it what we call arguments. Then you can choose to enable a slider or on the default list you can enable favoriting and then you can add to your menu and save it. So let's look at the custom layout. If you click in here you'll be able to see first you can give your page a title and then you can choose a starter template. So you'll see that we have some laid out here for you with images of what they're gonna look like. For example, let's choose WordPress posts. When I click on it, it's going to fill the code in here and close the starter template. Um, if I wanted to choose another one, I can always click to reopen this and then I can choose another one and it will overwrite and then show me this editor again. So let me go back to the WordPress posts. What you'll see is some HTML, including some custom tags, like we have this one, which is a post list. And then you'll see a URL, which you change to your website and whatever uh, post you want to describe, uh, show. And then you can also click on this for a reference. So you'll see in our custom HTML reference, you can see what these particular tags are, what they do, and even a link for more configuration options or details and you can also see some more of the stuff that you can do. So if I were to edit this one, I could put my website in here. I could put, I could say, uh, you know, I want this one post up here, and then at the bottom, I want the rest of them. And I could also do, let's say I wanted a category. Um, you know, you have to put in the category ID there. That is in our documentation how to do that. But then I can add the page to the menu, 
and click save and it's going to refresh the page and rebuild my app. So it's important to note that when you create these custom HTML pages, you do need to actually recompile the app preview because these are built into the app. So you'll need to rebuild it and same with any time you make a change to a menu. So let me show you a couple other examples of pages. You can display your menu items, which would be just the, the links that you have in your side menu or your tab menu. Those will display on the page there. And this has a toolbar with a login button. You can see that in the in some of the previews, like this one has a login button up top. Some other ones we have, your Learn Dash courses. We have some pre-built layouts for just different things like a login screen. Let me show you the login. Like if you have a membership app, you can put your logo on the front page and some information about the app and then a login button. Some of this stuff I know is uh, might be a bit confusing and you can check out our documentation. Again, open up the reference, which is going to tell you some things like, for example, you'll see this NGF user. That's based on showing it to if the user is logged in or logged out. So if they're logged in, they'll see this content. And if they're not logged in, then they, they will see a login button. Some of the buttons you can add, like for example, with this, this opens up a login modal. Some other things you can do, you can actually click to play a media file, a, a local media file, like a movie or an audio. And some of this stuff has some extra setup. So just make sure that you, uh, if like for example, if you're going to use Learn Dash courses, check out the Learn Dash setup documentation by clicking there. And that will make sure that you have everything set up correctly. You can also use Ionic UI components. And there's some links to some of this, which is going to open up in a new window. But essentially it's like these here, you see Ion card and some of the adjoining tags like the Ion card content. Ion button. Since we use the Ionic UI framework, you can use those in your app. You just want to make sure that you only use the static tags that are just for display purposes. You can't use the ones that actually need custom JavaScript. For example, the segment or like the forms I'm using Ionic, things like that need, need JavaScript to go with them. But you can use the um, like floating action buttons, the grid layouts, the icons, slides, and, you know, badges, things like that. So once I'm finished, what I can do is click, I can add it to my menu and then I'll click save and refresh. And what it's gonna do is actually start rebuilding the app for me. And it's also gonna refresh the page and then it's gonna tell me that it's still rebuilding the preview. So what this is doing is it's putting the page into my app and then it is also it is also rebuilding the preview so I can see that page in my preview. So until you won't see it until this is done. And then when it refreshes, you'll be able to actually look at the page that we created. You can actually go look in the menu that you have and you'll see that this demo page we added is in here. You can go ahead and give it an icon class if you want to and save that so that it will show up with an icon in your side menu and in your um, any pages that you have displaying the menu links like this. The next option would be media. This is where you can, it's also a list of posts, WordPress posts that have media attached. You do have to use our, uh, the AppPressor plugin, you have to set this up. So just make sure that you look in our documentation and add the actual media links to your movies or audio or whatever it is to your WordPress posts in the meta field and then you can add them here and it will show a list of the posts and then when people click on them, it will play the video or audio and it will also allow them to download that material for offline. Um, we also have another way to download uh, audio and, and media files from WordPress directly in an iframe page. Check out our documentation for information on that. BuddyPress, you just wanna make sure if you set this up initially, you want to make sure that you set up your activity members profile groups and messages page. You only need to do that one time. And then uh, same with the WooCommerce with your shop cart and account. Um, for example, if I was going to do my shop page, I want to choose the shop component and then it's going to tell me what code I need in there. The reason why we do this is because then you can customize this. So if you wanted to put, you know, a custom uh, header or something like here, or if you wanted to display, like let's say you wanted to display um, featured 
only your featured products and then you only wanted to display like three of those you would not have infinite scroll and then below that you could have like products so here would be featured and then there would be the rest of the products so you can do something like that to customize it or however you want and you'll just want to make sure that you have all three of these pages created shop cart and account separately and then the last one is the WordPress iframe page, which is, this is the easiest way to make uh, plugin functionality work that won't work through the API. So if it's anything other than text and images, or it's a plugin that we do not officially support, you will want to use this iframe page. And the way that this works is you're just going to do, you're going to add a, the link to the page that you want to display. For example, if it's a contact form, you put in, your site.com slash contact, whatever it is, and then you can put a icon name. You can click on this to find icons. And then you can also do one other thing, which is list WordPress posts in an iframe um, if, you, if you are not able to use our API-based integration. So uh, this is the easiest way to get plugins and other functionality to work in your app. Just keep in mind that it is a little slow and a little more clunky, but it is a great just sort of backup plan if this is the only way to, if you have functionality that absolutely has to work in the app and uh, you don't want to do a bunch of custom development to get it to work through the API. So just make sure once you are adding your pages that you either added them to the menu automatically or you can go over to your menu and then once they're created, click on add items and then you can search for your page and add it in there. You can find the iframe pages that you added in your menu. They will not show up under custom pages or in this search, but you can add more under WordPress slash external links. This is the same thing as if you added it in the custom page modal under WordPress iframe pages. So I can add mysite.com page and then just do custom page, add it to the menu, and that's the same thing that we're doing from the modal.